Welcome. Pour a cup. Fine night for a sidearm, but this is just talking. You ever get visited by a memory? It's clear as a bell, clear as yesterday. And then you, you do the math and realize it happened 45 years ago. Joey was here. Jocaste Ness, not the writer, though, you know, she did look a lot like Joey in that movie, El Dorado. Joey Campbell. She showed up out of nowhere, maybe three, four weeks late for our junior year in high school. Just kind of like she knew everybody would already be back in their little groups or cliques. She really didn't do much to reach out socially. Her looks didn't help either. Maybe you've heard of a thing called the cheerleader syndrome. She was so attractive. The boys didn't even try. We knew without asking she'd have better options and no point in getting shot down. And the girls would never suppose she'd be shy, so she must have been stuck up. Truth was, she was what's called an army brat. Her dad was a low-level training officer. She couldn't remember having been anywhere for a full two years at a stretch. Her social roots had been ripped and cut so often she'd learned better than to even try. Now at that time, I was aware of young ladies and the sight of Joey left me breathless. But I also had decided I was not two years from getting a job with a mining company like my dad and just about every adult male who wasn't gifted, either in the brain or in the saddle. I could never have explained that to Big Sean, my dad. But I did have a little sit down about it with our school's vice principal, Mr. Lowell, at the end of 10th grade. That helped me see pretty clearly that my grades were my ticket out. And though I had a long way to go, I never felt more relieved it was, it was in my hands. I was motivated. I mean, grades over teenage hormones? Lord. Well, half a year in, midterms, I honestly had pulled my grades way up, but all I could see was the giant hole I was in for Algebra 2. And to this day, I don't know why anybody came up with the idea of mixing letters with numbers. I mean, for generations of school kids to come, they might have thought about it X times two. Yeah. Monday, after those grades went home, I got called to Vice Principal Lowell's office. Uh, <laughs> nearly choked up in the hallway thinking he was going to tell me he'd been wrong and that I had no chance. A deep breath and I walk into Mr. Lowell's office and there sits Joey and brain freeze. <laughs> Seems that as he explained it, Joey was gifted at math but was struggling a little with the Spanish and so he was wondering if I'd mind spending some time each week with Joey so we could help each other with our studies. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm not terrible at keeping a poker face today, but at that moment, I blurted out a yes that made him laugh and Joey blush, and then I stammered all over myself needlessly explaining that I meant, no, I, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> you know, from there, the, the second half of that school year is a blur. I, maybe I helped Joey with her Spanish, but I have never loved math more than the times Joey told me how well I was doing and how impressed she was. And the time she said it and squeezed my hand and I squeezed hers back and she didn't let go. Oh. Now I could have left that moment alone, 
but somehow I thought it was a good time to talk. I thought I should hear about her life before we met. And that's when she told me about how she'd moved around so and how this last move was just her and her mom. I asked how her dad felt about it. Mom doesn't want him to know where we are, she said, and neither do I. Ooh, I look in her eyes told me, this talking's done. For somebody, maybe who I wanted to see is so mysterious, she could make herself unmistakably clear. Well, the year wound down, Joey survived Spanish, and I never did better with math, letters included. And in the, the last weeks, when we got caught holding hands in the cafeteria and then got caught kissing behind the gym, well, my reputation left the bounds of gravity. It was just chasing after my heart. I hated to see that school year end because seeing Joey got a bit more complicated. And thank goodness their landlord, who happened to be Mr. Lowell, as it turned out, he let her borrow his sorrel mare to practice her riding right up the road to our place. One very particular afternoon, a Friday, she rode in. I was saddled up and waiting. She said she had something to tell me and then turned back and trotted off. I caught up straight away. She slowed and said, by the way, happy birthday. I couldn't imagine a sweeter wish. It looked like she was almost tearing up. And then she spurred her horse. Well, neither of us actually wore spurs. And she galloped off down our road to the old mission. <laughs> this was really just the sad remains of an adobe house on our spread, a tiny old Mexican church, they said. One of Big Sean's very few dad jokes, he liked to call it the missin instead of mission because it wasn't there anymore. Yep. Joey wanted to sit in the shade of the western wall. She softly tugged my hand as I joined her there. Her eyes still seemed kind of glossy and we started to kiss. And then she slid my hand up to second base, you might say. <laughs> this was a big jump from holding hands and kitty kissing some. Honestly, a uh, first for me. I looked into her eyes and I knew the talking was done. But then, not so much for Big Sean. In that instant, my dad's voice echoed through those shattered walls like a broken bell. I reckon that's enough, plus a bit. Best get on home, girl. Well, Joey was up and leaving before I could figure out what all had just happened. I got to my feet and started past Dad for my horse when his <laughs> bear-sized palm met my chest and stopped me cold. I need to go make sure she gets back okay. I was pushing against his hand, going absolutely nowhere. She got here on her own. She'll be fine. I am going around or I'm going over. Well then, boy, you just give me your best. He squared his shoulders and set his feet. Big Sean did not bluff. I wasn't bluffing either, which surely meant I was not in my rightful mind. I was built like a reed back then. I had nothing to bring to this party. But maybe Dad forgot I'm left-handed. I came around and landed a haymaker to the right side of his jaw with a crack, and we both stood in shock for a second or two. And then it just got kind of sparkly dark. 
the lightning stopped when my head hit the ground, but the thunder that rolled on for a day or so. I only heard years later that Big Sean sometimes told folks with a noted tone of pride and a beer lifted that his son took the only tooth he ever lost in a fight. Now it was midday Sunday before I thought I might be able to stay upright on my horse. A couple more aspirin and I rode off to find Joey. Came down to the trailer they'd been renting on Carnation Street and there was Mr. Lowell putting a for rent sign in the window. What happened? Where'd they go? Well, son, they drove off yesterday, first light. Mrs. Campbell didn't say where they were headed, just that they wouldn't be back. I'd have thought you'd have known it was your pa. Brought them boxes a week ago to help them pack. You know, Mrs. Campbell actually wanted me to keep the deposit since it was already into the first week of the month when she gave notice, but I couldn't keep it. They were good people. I'm going to miss them. <laughs> yeah. Well, just about my watch. I guess I better get to it. Thanks for just talking.